Hey everyone! So geometry nodes are my new favorite thing in Blender. What I've made this time is a system that allows you to easily adjust the scale of your object by stretching it between two points of your choosing, which is a basic building block for a lot of neat creations. The cool thing about using geometry nodes to do this is that it's procedurally placed, so you don't have to physically line things up. And with a basic understanding of a few geometry node setups, you can start to make some pretty impressive procedurally generated scenes. For now, let's hide the default cube. We're going to start off by creating the object that will be the base of our geometry node system. Shift A, add a plane. We only want two points, which will serve as the start and end point of our stretch object. Tab into edit mode, switch to vertex select, select these two vertices, hit M and merge at center. Make sure your X axis, the red one, is going across the screen like this. Merge these vertices as well. Name your object so that you don't lose it. To make them easier to select, I'm going to instance spheres at both of my endpoints. Shift A, add a UV sphere, or any other shape. If you're using a sphere and you want it smooth, in edit mode select all and shade smooth. Hide the sphere object. Now let's create the object that'll stretch between the two spheres. For this example, I'm going to make a simple bar. Unhide the default cube and select it. Tab in edit mode and select all. Scale on the Y and Z axis by 0.1 simultaneously by locking the X axis. Switch to face select and select this face. Grab and move it on the X axis by negative 1 so that it lines up with the object origin. This is important for the system to work properly. The object has to begin at the object origin and end at negative 1 on the X axis. The object scales and rotates from the object origin, and having it end at negative 1 helps to cut out a lot of math in the geometry node editor. I'm going to switch into orthographic view because I find it easier to work in. Turn off the visibility of the cube object. Select our original two vertex object and switch the bottom area over to the geometry node editor. Hit new here and let's create the geometry node system. We're going to want an instance sphere on each vertex and a cube in between. Shift A, add a point instance node here, select the sphere object. This instances our sphere at every point on our instance object. They're too big, so add an attribute math node. Switch the B field to float, which allows us to input a value directly into the node. Use the attribute scale in the top field and the result field. Now what this node does is determine the scale of our object. Scale is 1 by default, but when you create an adjustable attribute called scale, it defaults to 0, so adding a float value sets the scale to that value. I'm going with 0.2 for now. I only want the cube instanced on the left side, which means we need to separate the points so that we can do something different at each one. I know that the x-axis location of the two points is different, so I'm going to use that to determine which is which. Add an attribute separate node. Use the position in the vector field. And under the result x, create a new attribute called x. So now our point's x positions are stored in an attribute called x. One has an x value greater than 0, and one is less. So I'll add an attribute compare node, switch it to less than, put x in the A field. Switch the B field to float and create a new attribute of any name in the result. The result is a boolean value for each point, true or false. If the location is less than 0, it outputs a value of 1 for true or 0 for false. Add a point separate node and use the new boolean attribute as the mask. False values come out of the geometry 1 output and true values come out of geometry 2. So the statement x location is less than 0 is false at this point. Duplicate these two math nodes with Shift D, connect Geometry 2 to them. If we connect this line up to the output, we've got the point that x is less than 0. Add a Join Geometry node here and connect both up to it. Now we have both points, but we can do different things to each. I want to add my cube object to this top row of nodes, but it's the right side point, so I'm just going to switch my operation to greater than, which will reverse where the points are on my Geometry node setup. Now the top one is the one I want to add more nodes to. This is purely personal preference, just make sure you add the cube object to the left side point. Right now our points are kind of fixed in space based on where the vertices are, so let's change that. Shift A, add an empty single axis, move it somewhere random. Duplicate it with Shift D, and put the second one somewhere else. Now let's add some nodes that move our points to where our empties are. Add an attribute fill node and duplicate it. Switch both fill nodes to vector inputs, and create two new attributes with whatever name scheme you'll be able to remember. Add an object info node, and connect the location to the fill node's vector input. Put the first empty in this field. Duplicate this node, and switch to the second empty, connect up. So now we have two attributes with the location of our empties stored within them. To get the locations of our points to match up with the empties, add an attribute mix node. Change the factor to zero. Put position in field A, the second empty location in field B, and the position in the result. As we slide this factor node up, our point's position will be mixed with the empty's location. At 1, it'll be using the empty's location entirely. Copy this node and put it on the top line. Switch the B field to P1. Now when we move our empties, the points move with them. 
You don't have to worry about moving it past the zero on the x-axis. Since we computed the point locations before translating them to the empty locations, it won't break our boolean value. Select one of the spheres to get back into the node group, and let's add the final part, the object that stretches between these two points. Duplicate a point instance node. Put the cube in this field. We want the location of the cube to start at this left point, so come off of this attribute mix node and connect to the join geometry node. And there it is, let's add some nodes to get it oriented and scaled correctly. Add a vector math node here, switch to subtract. Put the first empty in field A and the second empty in field B. Create a new attribute called angle in the result. Add an align rotation to vector node. Switch the bottom field to attribute and put angle in this vector field. Now the cube will point towards the second empty. The first time I did this, I did a whole lot of math with about 100 nodes to perform what these two nodes do. Let's get the cube scaled correctly. Add an attribute math node here. Put scale in the first field and the result. Switch B to float and set scale to 1. This value changes the overall scale, but in this case I only want to change the object's x scale. Add an attribute separate XYZ node since we only want to scale the cube on one axis. Put scale in here and name the X scale something, I called it SX for the scale of X. Add an attribute combine XYZ node here. Switch the X field to attribute and put SX in there. Put scale in the result and switch the Y and Z scale to 1. Now we can scale the X axis manually but let's have Blender do the math for us. Add an attribute vector math node here. Switch to distance, put both point positions in these fields, put SX in the result field. And now we have our spheres moving with our points and the cube stretching between the two. You can go into the original cube object and fancy it up and the changes will be reflected in the stretch object. This is a pretty simple setup, but you can use this to make some very cool things. Ooh, from the future, but also the past. As a quick addendum, geometry nodes are currently being changed potentially massively. So if you're using Blender 3.0 or later, this system is likely to be different. So if any of this really doesn't make any sense, that'd probably be why. Ooh, okay, back to the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you find this useful. I've been showing this quick bridge I made as an example of how you could use this node setup. The bridge, however, requires this extra attribute vector math node to keep it from twisting. As you get more comfortable with nodes, you can start to make some pretty cool things, so don't be afraid to just get in there and try some stuff. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. If you'd like to help our channel grow, share our video. Thanks again, stay safe, love you all, goodbye!